Hey everyone, welcome to the next video. You know, use state and use ref are two super amazing hooks inside of React. We use use ref so that we can reference elements inside of the DOM without having to access the actual DOM. You do the same things that we typically do in JavaScript to access the DOM to access these things using React. The use state is great because then you could create state and you could update that state without touching the DOM. But where do we get the problem when use ref or use state needs to be used inside of a loop? Something that either is in a loop that we have or that comes from an API. In that case, it all needs to be dynamic. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to use use ref and use state inside of a loop. These are two super powerful hooks that you're going to need and there's so many use cases. So let's get going. So let me show you the exact demo of what we're doing. So if you look at this, for example, you can go ahead and see that these fields are coming from a loop. And when you click save, you see the state changes, the, you know, the button gets disabled. So you see the difference here. And you can see it update in real time. So here's other fields. So the content gets changed here, the state, and over here it's different. So all that is from a, a loop. So it's based on use ref and use state inside of a loop. If you guys like React, Next.js, CSS, animations, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, so let's get going. So on screen, you could see here, I have my code side by side and the demo on the right. So we're gonna start building this together. So the first thing is we have a field here with a save button, but what happens when we want this to change state and change um, you know, different functionality, we typically create like a ref, a, a manual ref for it and a manual, you know, use state for the button. But now we need it to be in a loop. So let's go ahead and let's, we have your use state, use ref. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we're gonna create a ref. So search, the first thing I wanna do is create a reference for the buttons. So search button refs and use ref will be an array, right? Typically, if this wasn't there, it won't be an array, but here it will be an array because we're going to have a loop. Well, first, let's go ahead and create the loop, right? We have one field, but let's create, let's simulate uh, a loop. So we have an object here called fields and every field, we're just going to call it field true. It just really, that means nothing. It's just simulating an object where we have a loop of two elements. So now let's go ahead and loop over that and create this field from that loop, imagining that that came from an API or from some object that we need to use. So we're going to go ahead and loop over the fields. So we'll call it fields.map. Nope. Yeah. Fields.map. All right, so now we have the two fields coming from there, for, coming from this loop. But now these are the same elements sharing the same, you know, content. But what we need to separate them based on their placement in the array. So now we have the search button ref. So inside here, let's create the iteration. So in a map, you typically have any iteration field, uh, property. So we have I, and that'll become the key here for the, the field. Okay, so now we're looping properly. Now what we want to do is, go ahead and we want to be able to on click of the button let's say we want to disable only the second button not the first one and we don't really have any any sort of you know state we're just going to use ref for now so first we're going to do this with only ref so what we need to do is we need to create the reference for that element inside of the field okay no, sorry inside the button so let's go ahead and create the ref and it goes like this. So ref, and we're using search button refs. Now, typically you might think it's only this, right? Um, search button ref dot current I, which is its placement in the array, but that's not what it is. You need to use this full passing, um, all of the default, you know, the element inside of the, um, to reference it inside of the ref. So here we are. Now we have this reference. Now this ref is a ref that we can use and we can access anywhere inside of our React app by simply going search button refs dot current with the I dot whatever it is that we need to do to it. Okay, so now we have that ref, no errors so far. Let's refresh the page. On click, nothing happens. So now what we want to do is on click, let's go ahead and create a function that does something. So we're going to say, um, we're going to create a handle search button function. Okay, so we'll say function handle button. 
and we're going to pass it the, the iteration inside there, which I'll show you in a second. So right now we won't do nothing right here. So what we'll do here is actually right. So let's pass the iteration. So on click on let's move over here. So on click, we want to access this function. We want this function to execute. All right, so on click, we want the handle search button to, to, to run, but we want to pass the place of this element where it is, its iteration, you know, where it is, because that's how you want to reference it. So if we, we run this, we click here, right? Let's, what we want to do now, we want to be able to access that, and that's pretty, I don't want to say easy. Some, some one of the users got on me for saying easy. That seems to be one of my default things, but I want to, now it's easy because you get to see it. But if we go search button refs dot current, right? But now we have its place in the array. So we use that I because it's being passed, right? Where it is being passed as a parameter in the function. And now at all of the app, anything after that is just basic JavaScript, it's vanilla JavaScript, as if it was like, you know, get element by ID, get element by class, whatever it is, dot set attribute. And now we're just saying, you know what, just disable it. Let's hopefully this worked. It did great. So now look, if we refresh, I click save on this second element, it's adding disabled to that one. And if I click the first one, it's adding disabled to that one, right? So now we can make all these adjustments when these things are inside of the field. Um, now let me show you the next level, right? Because we're sort of, we're one step ahead where we actually have a ref in a loop. We're able to make an adjustment to an item in the loop. But now we're kind of accessing the DOM, which is not, you know, sort of frowned upon. We want to be able to use a virtual DOM. So we want to create state in a loop and we can update the state and do fun things like that. Now here's where the fun and sort of, sort of the, the, the difficulty with the powerhouse um, of this comes in. So let's get going. So what I'm going to do is hide this. And now what we want to do is go ahead and create um, state. Okay, so we want to we want to create some state. So let's go. Uh, we're going to create a default state called fields state set field state um, do over here, but now I'm going to, okay, so let me show you how this works. So we just have basic constant field state set fields, nothing as the default. But what we want to do is create an object and pass it as the default, right? We want to create uh, an object that it's going to be pushed into an array, right? Because right now we have state can be one thing, but we want to create all of these fields inside of the state. So we need to create an array of objects and let that be the default state. So let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is create just a variable called let field state content an empty array, right? This is not the state. It's just a field. Now we're going to map over the fields, right? And we're just going to create an array uh, with some default content. So if we go here, all we're doing, um, we're creating um, uh, a, a, a variable and we're mapping over this one and we're just creating some default, a default object, which is basically disabled equals false, a value equals nothing. So it's basically different things that we want to change in the state. and it's an array called field state content. And again, because we're mapping over fields, we're creating an array of objects inside of the state, which is wonderful. So now we want to use that as the default state for our field state, right? So if we were to go ahead just to take a look here, if we inspect the console, let's go ahead and just get a use effect just to show what's in the state. So if you see here, if we refresh the page at the bottom here, here's what basically we have our default state disabled false on the first iteration and on the second iteration, the same. So it's basically just, it's great because we're creating that loop and that basically comes from here. Okay. That's wonderful because now we have state matching our fields exactly and its placement in the array. Okay. So now let's say instead of us wanting to, if we go back here and we say handle search button and we say, go ahead and change the DOM, we're not going to do that. We're going to say change the state, change the place in the state. So let's go. Now, how this works is what we're going to do here is we're going to do another map over that state. And now what's cool here, you're going to learn how to update um, an array inside of a state. Right. And that's actually interesting. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to 
pass this over here. So we're gonna do it like this. So as you go in here, we're gonna say const update field in state equals, and we're, what we're gonna do is just map over the field state first, because that's where we're gonna make an adjustment. And we're gonna say field state. We're just creating iterations here. And now we're gonna say, if whatever's passed, right, when you handle the search, but if that iteration equals itself, it's in the, what's in the index, gonna map over this and make sure it's getting the right one inside of the index, basically finding where it's placement, the, the field's placement and matching it with the the placement in the state so then we're going to say const make a new field state equals another object we're just basically updating the object but first we want to pass whatever was in the object field state we don't, we don't want to write over all the other properties but we only want to write over the disabled and we want to change it to the opposite so field state dot disabled uh, is and then we want to say return the new field state and then we want to say or if not just go ahead and return the field state okay we don't want to make any adjustments to the other items in the state array so now um, just look here, right? If we look here, we have an object disabled and value. Every iteration has disabled and value. And here we're not going to update the value. We're just changing the disabled. You can either put false here, but I'm going to swap it out because I want every time you click, it gets changed. And now what we're going to do is now that we have this new object changed, now we're going to set that field, set the state with the new, um, with the new mapping, the new objects. So set field state, update field in state. Now, when we click here, let's do a little demo here. So let's inspect, let's just make sure this all works. So let's go to the console, let's refresh. Oop, no, we have a mistake here. So let's let's double check this here. So let's say what's the um, index, if I equals index, const new field state field state disabled field state return the new field state else oh we didn't return here so we didn't return when for the other side so otherwise return the field state right so okay so let's do this again sometimes when you make these adjustments sometimes you have to do a hard refresh the hot reload sometimes doesn't work so when we fix this now it works so if you look here in the console if you look at the console log at the bottom here disabled return to true and if you click the first one Again, the second one, the second iteration stayed true and the first one stayed true and we didn't do anything with the value yet. We haven't touched that. But now what's cool is we can update that. Now we're mapping over the fields and now we can just say, we can actually update the class of the button here and say, hey, if the state, if the fee, if the, the item in the state, you know, made a change, let's update a class only for that element. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say, I'm going to update a CSS module here. So let's say we have a class name equals whatever. Let's just make this default here. So now let's say if the field state, right, it's placed in the array. If it's dot disabled, then go ahead and add a styles dot disabled, which that will be inside of the our CSS class, our CSS module. Right, so if I show you that, I have that over here under um, styles.home.module. So I have one called uh, button, and then I have one called, if it's disabled, make this change. So instead of us changing the attribute, we're changing the state, and we're saying when the change of the state changes, add disabled class. So check this out. So if we go ahead and hit a refresh, we click here, boom. Because that field has became disabled, it's reading itself in the array and saying, add the CSS module called disabled on that field. Same thing here. And if you click it again, it reverses, right? And you can see the console log changing. And to make this even easier, what I wanna do is I'll go ahead and let it um, display on page as opposed to doing inside of the console. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll take this off. Now I didn't update the value just yet. That's the next third step. But if you click here, you can see it changing, right? Isn't that, that's pretty amazing. Now for the third and final step, what we're gonna do is how do you update the state 
another property inside the object inside of the loop, which is going to be the content inside of the field. When someone types, I want it to update the state uh, for that item in the state. So let's go ahead and let's make a new function called handle input typing. OK, so I basically just want to say uh, another function for when and you always want to name functions. You want to make the name uh, meaningful, right? So if someone reads the function, they understand what's happening. So basically, we're just saying handle input typing. As someone's typing, we want to handle that input. So it's called handle input typing. And what we're going to pass here, we have to pass the iteration. So we're going to pass the I and the value that we want to update. Now, that's an empty function. So we want to go into the input area right here. And we want to say um, on change, right? So let's go here. So on change, right? As someone is typing, go ahead and pass the content. So handle input, input typing. And we're going to pass as parameters the iteration that it's in and the e dot target dot value. So we're basically passing oops, a little error here. Oh, just didn't have my field right. You know, when I'm doing this, like these tutorials and constantly typing the code, it drives me bananas sometimes. So what we're doing is handle input typing and we're just passing two things as parameters. The iteration it's in in the loop and the value of that field. So let's start typing and let's go up here. Now we didn't do nothing as long as this works, right? So no errors on change, but let's hit a refresh. And now let's actually update the state just like we did, but only the value property. So we're basically going to do almost the same thing that we did. So I'm just going to really copy what we you know, did above for the function above. But instead of updating the disabled property we're going to change so this is all pretty much the same as above but we're going to be changing the value to whatever the value it parameter comes through and remember that value is what's typed in so we're going to go ahead and do that and let's go ahead and check this out what no not working just yet so let's oh because we didn't set the state so let's go ahead and set the state to the new objects so let's hit a refresh Hello, look at that. When you type hello, the value is changing only on the top field, not the second field. World, blah, blah, blah. I just love this. We click save. It's true. Like the use case, like that's it. We're done with this tutorial. I mean, just looking at this just is. You don't know how much this has saved me in trials while I was creating a lot of apps. It's there's so many use cases. I just wanted to show you how to make these use refs in loops, how to change the state in loops. But you're going to find there's so many use cases for this when you're building real production apps. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.